Hi, this is Michael Green, uh, Dodgy on the Lightway Forums. I'm just going to run through some of the cool stuff in Soft Effects, um, which people don't seem to use too much, I don't know. Uh, but I've found it quite useful for doing certain things in character animation. So I'll just have a look at those. I've got a, my male figure here, um, which is already built and rigged. And I'm going to open up the FX panel. So uh, you've got input operator, deform, bump, file, and edit effects. Uh, some of those are already on other um, effects panels as well, like the edit, edit effects and file. Um, what we've got here is uh, the input tab, which um, consists of a uh, group, which basically you can group different effects together so that they don't interfere with other effects. So you might want all your characters closed just to be in one char in one group while maybe <coughs> excuse me, uh, another effect is going on in the background. You can isolate those from each other. Uh, you can set a delay on the uh, soft effect so it starts after a short amount of time or a long amount of time or whatever and then you've got a couple of motion force and wind force values now um, if you turn on the delay there you can see that these delay functions uh, activate so you can get those to work off that delay I'm going to keep it at zero for now motion force is the effect of things as they're moving so um, as he animates um, the motion force effect, you can scale that up and down or whatever. And that's basically all the wobbling that happens as he's moving around. So um, soft effects is kind of for um, muscles or wobbly parts on your characters. It has a quite a few other functions as well, but uh, that's mainly what I'll be using it for here. Uh, and then you've got wind force, so you can use wind to affect uh, parts of the character if you want. Um, you can't get gravity to affect soft effects objects, uh, which is why this force direction uh, is quite useful. Um, if I press calculate, this is just with some default settings that I have on at the moment. The good thing about soft effects is you can change the settings and see what effect they have on the character um, when you're playing it. So you can see there I've got some wobbling going on on the leg and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the force direction, uh, you can use that to simulate gravity affecting the weight of stuff. So let's put that down to say minus one. You can see everything starts to sag quite a lot. So you don't really need a lot of um, force for that. Um, so I'll say point oh three. You can see just there you're getting a little bit of a wobble as things start to sag just at the beginning of the animation. And you can also use a key uh, and an envelope key to drive that force. So if you want something to suddenly shake, like a, an earthquake or whatever, you can turn on forced by key. And uh, every time it hits a keyframe in the envelope, it'll reiterate that um, wobbling due to sort of gravity or whatever. And you can set that to X, Y, or Z direction. So use it to uh, simulate a little bit of gravity on things. Okay, you've got the operator, which is where the main bulk of the stuff happens. Um, and you use an operator map to control where the wobbling occurs. So if we go to modeler, and I go to my weight map, I have a weight map set up, which is called uh, muscle. You can see here, I basically um, turned up the weights on everything that's going to wobble around on my character uh, and cut down on bits where the 
character is the sort of the muscle gets more pinned or attached. So you get more of a, a discrepancy between the two. So if I switch back to here, uh, if you switch it to none and then say switch it to your muscle weight map, you can see that it highlights you know, sort of color codes, which bits are going to be animated while it's doing that. Uh, I'm just going to press T to get rid of that, just so I can see the original character again. Uh, you've got different modes which you can use here, and they um, change how the weight map falls off. So uh, with none, it's just a linear effect. So um, zero in the weight map will be no effect. 100% will be um, full effect. But as you go between those two ranges, it'll be a linear fall off. Um, you can change it to square, so you get more of effect at higher values and less of, of an effect at lower values. You can invert the weight map, so um, you can make all the bits that are wobbly not wobbly, and all the bits that are not wobbly wobbly, uh, which is useful if you've set up your weight map for something else. Uh, and then you've got quad, which is like you know, a higher version of squared, and inverse square and inverse quad for doing the opposite to you know flipping the map around again. You can change the effect size, so you can see if I move down to his leg here where it's moving quite quickly, it's wobbling quite a lot. And if you scare, if you like really punch that up to say 100, you get a huge amount of wobbling. So you want to perhaps keep that fairly low or, you know, depending on the scale of your object and things. So you get a nice wobbling effect there. Maybe I'll go 10. And you can see it's wobbling much less. Wave cycle determines how many times it wobbles before it comes to a rest. So we've got it set to three. That's one, two, three, and then it stops. And then wave size determines the length of the, um, the f like how long it wobbles over, as it were. So I've got it fairly short because muscles don't tend to wobble that much. They come to a rest pretty quick. Now you've got two operator maps you can use. Um, I tend to use one for muscle and then one perhaps for fat. Um, so, you know, fat obviously wobbles a lot more and will come to um, a slower rest. Um, you can use that in conjunction with this one down here. Um, one will give motion from um, just the motion of the body and the operator two will be used, will be um, driven by wind effects. So if you've got wind in there, you can choose to use it that way. Or you can turn on calculate OP2 last, operator two last so that um, they sort of combine in a slightly different way. And you can also have an operator switch to convert to um, have one working and then switch to another one that's not, you know, to, to switch it between the two effects and sort of blend between them if you want. And you can use a texture on that as well. Uh, if you want to have collision, so you want to collide a ball or something with the, the character and have it dent into the character, you can do that. Um, you can choose to have it collide only with one particular object, which is probably useful, again, to cut down on uh, calculation times. And you can also get it to um, bulge around the collision area. So it's not just a uh, thing. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to move to the bump uh, tab. Now, this is quite useful as well because uh, you've got a value here. Let me just turn that off again. You've got a value here, compressed bump. Now that uses a weight map, which you can set in here. So I'm going to turn on, put it to do my compression weight map. You can see I haven't really got much of a weight map on the head or the hands. Um, but most of the rest of the body, it's got a compression. It's got the, the compression weight map on it. And this basically, compressed bump allows you to. Um, bulge out areas that get compressed, which is what happens at things like if we have a look at this elbow. Um, it's 
I set it to zero, there's no it sort of it just bends as it were. But if we bump this out to something outrageous, you can see the muscles here are starting to really bulge out as it compresses. So it starts off fairly normal and then bulges out. Again, this is a value you don't really want terribly high, but it just gives that nice subtle uh, in, increase in bulging of uh, muscles where they get compressed. Uh, you've got negative bump as well, so in areas which are stretched, um, then it will suck those areas in. So you can see here as I adjust it down, bits are being stretched, are being pulled in towards their thing. I don't tend to use that that much because it uses the same weight map as compressed bump. Uh, and you might not want that on sort of areas like the, the sides of the body where if he's bending over you don't want it to suck in too much. They don't tend to, you don't the body doesn't tend to suck in too much on the sides. Um, and you've got bump offset. Now that allows you to bump the whole character out and make him basically a beefcake. Big beefy beefcake. And of course that's driven off the same weight map. So you can keep his head really tiny and really blow out the rest of it. And if we just set it, you can set a bump limit. So that limits how deep the bump can go. And when it's set to zero, it doesn't limit it at all. So as soon as it goes to 0.1, it gets very small. You also got, um, let's just turn that back down again. Oh, you can actually set that to a negative number as well. But it doesn't seem to do anything. So no uh, sort of weight loss there. Okay. Uh, make wave by you can um, generate waves on an object. This is more for sort of C and things like that. Um, if you set a weight map in here, everything that's like 100% in the weight map will act as a wave source on the surface of the object. So, and you'll get ripples going through from that particular area. Um, but yeah, so that gives you sort of some useful um, effects. And because it's it's unlike cloth effects, you don't have to calculate it each time. You can see exactly how your effect is changing, depending on you know what the values are, without having to recalculate. You just change the the value, and then it updates it. So you can just keep playing through and seeing how it is. Um, and there you go. Uh, some useful functions in soft effects, which is I don't think tend to get used as much as um, cloth effects. Uh, and you can see various bits of his body wobbling and bulging um, due to it. So I hope you found that useful. And I'll uh, hopefully be doing another uh, tutorial soon.